It's race weekend for me at the Masters Historic Festival at Brands Hatch, but I've got a little bit of a problem. My plug-in hybrid is almost sure to be turned away at the gate and I'm going to be sent home for having an engine full of volts. Luckily, I've been given the opportunity to borrow this beast from Le Mans Coupes as I hitch a lift in this GT40 Mark I to Brands Hatch circuit. So Oliver, you have a track record of recreating these awesome 60s beasts. I want you to take me through this car from the tip of the nose to the, uh, the beautiful tail and, uh, and tell me what we're, we're going to be dealing with. Today. No, no problems at all. Uh, so this is our demonstrator Superformance GT40. We build continuation cars from the 60s, so Cobras, GT40s, and we're, we're going to be going out in this. It's based off the Mark II chassis, but we can have Mark I or Mark II bodies, and we've gone for the Mark I with this. So it is accurate to the original cars with a few mod, mod cons to you know, make it usable on the, on the modern roads in the UK. Surely so. not a resto mod that that that, that, that word. no 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 it's uh, but you've got some you've got some little road extras you've got some fan cooling like the, the the race cars didn't have exactly right yeah so we've got the, the fan cooling uh, we've also got air conditioning in, in internally which is you know very very important for uh, when you're going on a long road trip just to, to keep the temperatures down um, but it, it's it's exceedingly accurate to the original cars you've got the original knockoff wheels uh, we've got BRM wheels on this one um, you know the interior is pretty much as they were. We have to run an immobiliser for you know for various reasons to pass the IVAs and get them road legal, uh, central handbrake and things like that. But fundamentally, the basis is the GT40 from the 60s. So sitting in it, you've got those iconic seats. Yes. And then that the great big GT40 steering wheel with the right hand uh, shifter, right hand drive, of course, for the for the UK roads. Well, it's as they were in period as well. So yeah, dog leg first. It's great. You, you step into the car and it feels like you're leaving the pit lane at Le Mans in the 60s. You've got the letterbox windscreen. It's, it's just one of, for me, I might be biased, it's one of the ultimate feelings, automotive experiences that you can, you can have. GT40, of course, car named after its height. And you can actually see I'm, I'm a man of average height and it's only, we're only hip bone high on me. So it's, a proper, it. it's a proper low slung sports car. Talk to me about the engine. So we've gone with a Prestige Motorsport injected seven litre 427 litre engine, which was actually more correct to the Mark II of the period, which you would have seen in film, the film Le Mans 66. Traditionally or historically, a Mark I would have run with a 289 or a 302, but you know, for the for the road use, the extra torque, the extra power, it's just just a fantastic unit. So we we can we can equip the car with whichever power plant you want. We went seven liters. We've got 600 foot pounds of torque. We've got 500 brake horsepower. Uh, it's fantastic fun. Another point to note is we run fuel injection. Really important for the modern roads. You're not going to overheat. You've got better cold start, better fuel efficiency. Not that that's what this car is necessarily about. Um, <laughs> I think there are other options. There are yeah exactly. <laughs> so um, yeah so it, it's just a fantastic unit and, and, and it's mated to the Quaife box. Uh, again, original dog leg first gear, five speed uh, with limited slip diff and it's, it, it's just a fantastic. I mean, in period they spent $30 million developing the GT40, which in today's money is I think just shy of a, a billion dollars. So the chassis is exceedingly well sorted, the engines are fantastic and it's designed to do 24 hours flat out around Le Mans, so just, just a fantastic bit of fun. Where do I sign? <laughs> <laughs> Stop teasing me, mate. Let's, <laughs> let, let's, let's have a go in the car. Let's, let's have a go in, in the car. GT40s. Who had the idea? Why? Why, 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 re why recreate these cars? It all started with um, Superformance uh, when they're in South Africa, and uh, basically Jimmy Price, who uh, owns High Tech Automotive, the factory, uh, built a kit car Cobra. Bought and built a kit car Cobra, and thought I can do so much better than this, um, and so he designed his own and built his own. 
yeah. and uh, that's what you see in the garage there, the Mark III, the 427. Yeah. Um, and uh, his mates were like, oh, I really like that. Can I get one? And he's like, yeah, okay, cool. So they built one for him, and then he did like seven or eight in a year and thought, oh, there's an opportunity here, and basically turned it into a business. So I think it was in um, 87 he started producing these Cobras yeah. um, and then it always evolved and Nigel met him in 98 because Nigel owned 39PH which was the AC Cobra okay. um, and um, yeah Nigel owned that and Jimmy knew of Nigel through that and Nigel went over to America for a Shelby convention um, so they way. literally so they literally yeah, met at a, at a Shelby at a Shelby convention and made the decision there and then that yeah, they were so, going to be the UK agent for yes. this kind of car. Oh, yeah. Exactly right. So Jimmy knew of Nigel, knew of 39PH, um, and Nigel drove a Mark III by Super Performance and loved it, said it's better than the original. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they, they, they shook hands there and then, and Dad said, I'm your UK agent, aren't I? Shook hands, <laughs> and the agreement's been in place ever since. Um, but when they were talking, Jimmy said, uh, my passion and my, my favourite car is the Daytona Cobra. We've yeah. got Peter Brock who designed the originals, we've got Bev, Bob Nextad who designed the suspension for the GT40s and we're giving them a clean sheet of paper so we said to them, design the car in the 60s you would have built if you didn't have the time constraints that you faced because obviously yeah. the Daytona Cobra is the rebodied uh, Cobra. Yeah so Nigel um, loved the Daytona Cobra as well, he got offered the um, the original Wilman car when he owned 39PH yeah. and um, Sadly, turned it down because it was a lot of money at the time. I mean, it was like I think forty thousand pounds they wanted for it, which in today's money is quite a lot. Yeah, fair enough. And um, yeah, so Dad said, "I love the Daytona Cobra too. It's my favourite car." Um, and ordered a couple. And uh, in two thousand three, the first one turned up. And then um, basically, Super Performance have just evolved their range with the Mark II Cobra uh, and the GT40. First one done in two thousand seven. Uh, but the whole point was having everything done correctly. Yeah. So um, you know these go these are eligible for the Shelby World Registry. Um, you've so, so what does that what does that actually mean then in in, in real terms? It, it means that it is it is essentially a sh it's a Shelby car. Uh, so this isn't a, a Shelby product as such, but it is recognized by Shelby. So it goes on the World Registry of GT40s. Okay. It's obviously Carroll Shelby involvement at the beginning was. Um, you know, it was, was huge. Yeah. Um, and, you know, subsequently we've got GT40P chassis numbers, so um, we do a 2000 series continuation chassis number. We talked originally about doing a 1000 series. Yeah. Um, but just to stop the blurred lines of, you know, what was original, what is, yeah, you know, we went with the 2000 series, but they are doing a limited run of 1000 series uh, chassis. Which, which, is a, which would be like a direct continuation chassis number from the the final that were of the originals that were produced. Exactly right. So the, the, the golf car in the garage yeah. is a dead ringer for the original 1075 car. It's a touring car. They got access to the original car, uh, took all the drawings, all the designs and everything. So it is exactly as the other car is, just um, you know, without without the price tag. Yeah. Uh, so someone can get the period correct 1000 series chassis number. But these are 2000 series and it's just, you know, it's the proper thing. Um, ultimately, it really is. So how, how many inquiries for a car like this do you get per year? That you, you know, it's, it's a. Let's be honest with ourselves. It's a specialist. It's a specialist thing. You've got to really want to own one of these, haven't you? You do. It's funny. Originally, um, when we did the Daytona Cobra, we thought they're going to go crazy, and we thought we'd do two or three GT40s. Yeah. We've now sold. I think we're about 55 GT40s, both as road cars and as FIA race cars. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's quite quite a few. A lot of, um, it's either people, you know, young people like our age who have been really successful in business or in, um, you know, in banking or whatever it might be, and they want something different because, you know, these cars have a lot of soul. Yeah. There's a bit more character to I can, them. I, you I can know, feel it, it's it soul yeah. rumbling as yeah. they're sitting here. Um, you know, so you get those clients or the, the people who, um, saw them racing in period, they've worked really hard, they either have a collection of cars or they want this one car and they come along and um, you know they'll have a drive in this and um, you know either either go for it or not. So you amaze me with the youth of because the, the first person you described there is a potentially you know sub 40 
some 40 year old man or, yeah. or woman who have, who have you know actually don't have any concept of it really as a, as a race car beyond you know videos they've seen or or ideals which is really interesting to me yeah it, it you know it, it's not the majority of our clients you know i'd say that's um slightly lower on the average uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> age yeah. range but you, you know you, you get the people i had a chat down two or three weeks ago um sadly his father passed away a little while ago a few years ago um but he's been very successful in in the banking world and he loves gt40s and he thought well why wouldn't i do it why wouldn't i go for it you know he's got a collection of other cars and um you know so that's really encouraging to see but uh you know i'd, I'd say the, the majority of clients are um you know sort of maybe a bit more middle-aged yeah. um, and they've got the connection from period um, yeah. and that's interesting so a lot of people that have kind of a, a connection to the car in some way or perhaps you know worked on the car and have moved on through their lives or, or something like that you would say yeah exactly and you know I, I think the fact of the matter is it's such an iconic car whereas the daytona cobra you'll know it because you've uh, raced against them and um, tried to try not to run into them. <laughs> yeah, tried not to run into them exactly so um you know if you know them you know them but it's not as well known as a gt40 but then you know things like the film le mans 66 coming out or ford versus ferrari some people know it um really sort of highlighted that it was a no holes barred any cost beat Ferrari yeah. project and that's why I mean we haven't had a chance to open it up yet just letting everything warm up but um, it is a very well balanced chassis you got um, it's very predictable and it's usable so you know you can take all the potholes on the modern road because it's designed to hit all the curves yeah. for 24 hours at Le Mans or Daytona or whatever other races they, they went to um, yeah no matter so, how much Ken Miles says it's not a moon rocket in the <laughs> I think I think you know back in back in you know 1966 it was wasn't it? It was an absolute moon rocket. Oh, 100%. percent. Hundred percent. Talk to me about film then, because ha have you been asked to? You know, presumably the the requests are are considerable for for cars to be involved in in film and cinema from for, for you. Uh, obviously, Le Mans 66 was the big one because our cars are literally. Re you know accurate recreations or continuations of those cars so uh super performance in the usa uh, as i say before who we're the uk agents for uh, they got asked to supply the cars so it's six mark two cobras yeah. unfortunately we're following this bus it's a bit annoying um <laughs> it's very very frustrating um yeah so um we supplied the cars for that other things not so much i'd love to uh to get out to more like music videos and um, yeah. you know all that sort of stuff i think it'd be quite cool it's something quite different um so yeah you can post my phone number up and yeah. uh, <laughs> any inquiries can get in contact <laughs> gt40 <laughs> available for movies <laughs> exactly mildly branded yeah yeah <laughs> exactly yes yeah, exactly you you race yourself both you and and nigel are have a racing background a racing heritage yeah, yeah so uh, unfortunately you're um 10 or 12 years too late into the lola t70 game yeah. because um <laughs> nigel had a very successful uh, racing career with Lola T70s and Cobras, again, 39PH. Um, so it would have been great to see those battles. I think one of his um, claims to fame was beating Richard Atwood in, a, in a, a, an equal T70 at Brands Hatch. Yeah. Um, to harp on and bore you with the story. Uh, that, that's definitely we, not a boring story. <laughs> so um, we got told by our mechanic uh, that what Richard will do um, is he'll follow you and he'll stalk you and he'll watch you. Yeah. And um, so, He'll, he'll, he'll learn your driving and what you're doing and where he can where he can work his magic because that's space that the man's got a lot of talent yeah and um, so anyway Nigel qualified pole I think and he qualified second and uh, Richard got the lead into the first corner and uh, eventually Nigel overtook him okay. um, and true to form Richard just followed yeah. and uh, Nigel remembered this so what he did is he backed off his braking by about 10% so he going, gave himself a margin. Gave himself a margin. So first, first uh, lap, it was balls to the wall, like go, yeah. overtake, got the move done. Richard was very happy to follow. So Dan just backed off the braking zones, and then the last two laps, the mechanic said he will um, overtake. He'll go to overtake, and that's yeah. where Dad, you know, went 100%. And, uh, and Richard couldn't get past because he wasn't expecting it. So, um, yeah. you know, it's uh, I always love that story. But yeah, no, Nigel raced very successfully in historics. 
um, you know, we've got a huge love for T70s. So hopefully your race this weekend um, yeah. will, will go exceedingly well, and uh, you know, it'd be good to to relive my uh, my memories through <laughs> through your onboard footage. Um, do, do you think you have to love racing to to be involved with building these cars, or do you think this is really reborn as more of a road car than a than a race car? I think we wouldn't be doing what we're doing if we didn't love cars and especially cars of the 60s um, I think I, d I don't know I, I can't understand anyone who doesn't love cars or cars of the period yeah, you're, so you're not uh, going to find any sympathy for that. <laughs> so I, I would have thought like anyone who gets the opportunity to work with these will want to work with them but no I think you know having the the, the, the pedigree I mean Nigel owned an original GT40 wow. um, you know not in the 60s but I think 70s or 80s yeah um, he owned T70s and Cobras so it really is what he's about and then I've been brought up in that environment and that's what I love and that's my passion so yeah I think that really helps because I mean to me even if we get an inquiry and someone comes down and it's not the right car for them yeah no problems because we've had a wicked day driving GT40s chatting cars and, and uh, it's great yeah and it's great we're both in this kind of environment of of classic cars do you, where do you see it all going what, what do you what do you think about the, the direction of the industry at the moment and and its troubles and its opportunities and its its threats great question i think there's a lot of talk of everything going electric um which i think would be a crying shame and i think you know without taking any political stance or views or anything like that um i don't think the, the reasons they're pushing it I mean, are the reason true. you're giving me a ride down there is I'm relatively sure Gary Pearson won't let me drive if I turn up in a hybrid. Exactly, but <laughs> like, you know, the, the environmental concern, I get it. I, you know, it's a real thing and people need to take it seriously. I don't think cutting, I don't think moving 100% electric is going to be the way to solve that. Yeah. Um, so hopefully they'll understand that and either make an exception for small businesses like us because we can't contribute to the economy. Um, you know, through our taxes and VAT and etc, etc, and they'll allow us to continue to produce low volume cars or, you know, I think is it Porsche and Siemens that are doing those uh, environmentally friendly fuels which might yeah. allow it to go. So hopefully it'll stay. We're keeping an eye on the future. We're partnered up with a, um, an electric car company. We're sort of future proofing what we do. Um, do you think it will be, do you think it'll be the same? Do you think it'll give you the same, the same tingle in the, in the bottom of your stomach every time you you put the throttle down no, if it's fast enough. I don't, I don't know if it'll give you that. Um, <laughs> the overrun yeah, exactly. I don't know if it'll give you that. Um, it will give you it will give you the sensation of speed because you know electric cars are naturally quick. Um, and it's gonna be a fantastic product. I mean the, the people doing it are incredible and they're, they're not buying a Tesla motor and chucking it in. Yeah. It's bespoke, it's, it's great. Proper. But you know, for me it's about the heritage of the car. Um, you know the 60s nature of the car, uh, the big rumbling V8, yeah. uh, the overrun, crackling, uh, the heat, um, the noise. The noise is you know three quarters of it. So, I yeah. mean, what, what I find amazing is that you know you put this kind of stuff. People don't know this stuff exists. You know, especially a generation even younger than me. Yeah. You know, they, they don't know that these cars are there because actually they're not being put in front of them. And I really, I, I feel a duty as somebody who's passionate about this stuff and a, and a racer perhaps a bit more of the old school. Um, maybe the last generation of racing driver that, you know, heel and toe and, you know, yeah, yeah. changed gear with one hand yeah. and, uh, or, or, and steered with the other. Yeah. You know, before, you know, the generation right below me have only ever driven a paddle, paddle shift race car. Yeah. And, yeah. and I feel a little bit of a, a responsibility to throw it in front of people and be like look this is what they sound like this is what they look like and if you don't like it you know and if you don't think that that's cool then that's that's great it's, it's not for everyone but it amazes me when you throw it in front of people how many people go what on earth yeah. is that yeah and i think the the arrowhead of that are cars like the gt40 when you say GT40, even to a very young person, because they might have seen Le Mans 66 or yeah. another piece of footage, they'll go, okay, yeah, yeah, I know what it is. And then that's maybe like a, you, you could call it, call it an entry drug <laughs> into, yeah. Into, yeah. The cla into the classic car yeah. world, you know, yeah. and then they'll get into the, the next thing. Yeah, um, and, you know, I, I think there'll be a, a clear divide. There'll be the petrol heads who love the cars and 
you know, this will suddenly become something they lust after because it is so raw and visceral to drive. And then there'll be the other people who, because I, I, I think, depending on which way the industry goes, I think the next 10 years is going to be crucial. Yeah. But I think it's going to uh, divide people to cars just being a, a, something to get you from A to B, and that's it. Yeah. And then there's going to be the people where the petrol runs through their veins and it excites them a bit. You know. I can't chance you while that <laughs> So we've arrived at Browns Hatch. Oliver, thank you so much for the ride in this beast. I've made it and I'm pretty sure I've asked at the gate, they're gonna let me in. So, uh, <laughs> so it's very, very kind of you. No problem, thank you very much for your time and, uh, and coming out for a play. The thing is, I, I just, I don't, I don't wanna leave it. Um, so, okay, if I promise you, I'm gonna win one of the races here this weekend. Could, could I have a, just, can I have a quick go? You can have a quick go, yeah. As long quick, as you promise, oh, as long go. as you promise to a get a win go. this weekend. Well, we're here, sorry guys, uh, the, the racing can wait. I'm going to have a quick go in this and, uh, and then we're going to head in and do some Masters Historic Racing, eh? Life's tough. Life's really tough. <laughs>